and inspo here. So this is a quick hack that I do uh, for, for Memtest86, so that way I can boot right up into um, the, the, the test with just using my hard drive. Um, one of the things that I do is I, I create one of these USB um, drives using Memtest. Go to memtest86, download the uh, the file. Just go to downloads. Uh, this is the file. It's a zipped file. Let's see. I'll extract all of that. Okay. And then it has this image USB program. I will select my USB drive. Set everything just like that, and then just hit right. Yes, continue. Yes, so what this does is creates all of the files where when you boot into your computer for the first time, you can select the USB drive and then run the memtest86 um, the tool the testing tool uh, right before going into like an operating system um, and then you can test your memory uh, see how stable it is and, and everything else without having to load up something like Windows and then test your system against uh, test test against the system while something is running um, in, in memory let's see here so that is finished what I will then do is you can see the uh, removable disk. It has these files in it, and if you notice, it has an EFI uh, boot type of uh, file in there as well. So this allows that if you have an EFI uh, BIOS, uh, UEFI, you can actually have one of these, um, these other types of setups with uh, another partition and in that partition, uh, boot that partition up instead. So I will go into a disk. Um, uh, let's see here, it's create and format hard disk. So what I will do is on my main partition that I have for C, we'll go ahead and shrink that volume and we'll shrink it to maybe about Let's see, you don't need a lot of space. So probably like 250 megs of space. And what will happen is that you'll create this unallocated uh, partition after your Windows partition. Here I create a new simple volume, um, 249, next. Just any sort of drive letter is fine. Now I will format this to FAT32 so that way things can be written to it. Uh, I'll name this mtest86 next finish. Now what this will do is for that PC create an extra removable disk. So in that space it's just in that space, you'll see, let me open this up. You should see nothing in there. Oh yeah, right here, sorry. It's at E, Mentest. So there's nothing in here and it's a blank Blank, uh, blank area in your disk. I'll go to the removable disk, copy all of these files, and move it into that mem memtest86 partition. So now, um, when you reboot, you can pull out the thumb drive right now. Go ahead and reboot.
if you uh, have um, a motherboard that can halt before booting up, the uh, Z490 actually has a feature where before you boot, um, it all it can allow it so that way you you can uh, I guess load up the boot menu uh, before going into boot. You'll see this extra partition um, UEFI OS WD Black. Um, this is your main boot manager, and this is where Windows will normally go and start. This is the partition that you created, and this is another location that you can start. Um, I'm going to go into the BIOS real quick and kind of show you. Here, for a Z490, you actually have an option where you can always show the boot option. Normally, this is off by default. Um, for me, I set this as on, so that way I can um, have that boot menu, menu option so I can go into settings if I want to. It saves a lot of time because a lot of times um, I will hit delete repeatedly or I'll just miss hitting delete. Next thing that happens is that I'll end up um, um, missing the opportunity to get into my BIOS. The, um, the other thing is that if you keep hitting F12, usually in a lot of motherboards, more recent ones, F12 will get you a boot menu. Um, and then the boot menu will look something like this. Here, uh, I want to be able to go into this boot, um, or at least this, this, this partition that I created. Uh, this partition is just a carved off space in your hard drive. And what this will do is it'll load up what was originally on that USB thumb drive. Um, that USB thumb drive was bootable and it had a UEFI or a, an EFI uh, setup where you can uh, boot into it and um, run memtest. So what I've done here, a little hacky, is just take the things that were on that thumb drive after I created it, moved it into uh, my mother or my the SSD that's in my motherboard. Uh, so that way then I can run memtest without having to use my thumb drive. The the reason why is um, if you have, have, if you ever run memtest 86 off of your thumb drive, it's kind of slow. It's excruciating slow uh, at times. So this will actually speed up loading memtest and then um, doing things like running the test and, and things of this nature, it actually speeds up the process as well. Um, although some of these tests are long running tests, so you can't really speed up anything there. Now, the other thing is running various tests. Um, I will go through a process of running all of these for stability, and you'll probably go through a number of passes. Uh, here it's by default set to four. Other times what I notice is that when I am trying to tweak and tune my memory, uh, what I'll do is turn off various tests. I found that most often than not, uh, the first tests that fail and fail often are uh, test number six and seven, uh, where it's doing this block move of 64 byte blocks and then this moving inversions of, of 32 bit pattern uh, blocks. Um, and then I will just set this to one. And this is usually my quick test before I go into the OS to run other types of tests. Um, other tests will while you have Windows loaded, will show different kinds of problems and show instability if you've overclocked your memory and haven't gotten it quite right. Um, the issue with that, though, is if you load up into Windows and then you end up running a mem test, sometimes you will actually corrupt your operating system. So this is why you end up running mem test without loading up the OS. Um, I've, I've done this several times where I've done um, some sort of overclock. Next thing that happens is I go into Windows, think everything's fine. Later I find out that various files that I'm copying, moving, or, or even running in Windows, they end up becoming corrupt. And that's because memory, uh, the memory overclock did not take and it's not stable. Uh, so usually the safest way is to do like a mem test and do it not within the operating system. And then here uh, to start the test, you hit S. You can see the menu on the, on the left there. You can do a T to select and get into this menu. And then um, I hit enter to kind of select the various tests or deselect them. Um, I can do in this as well, you can do um, things where you look at, I, I, for example, like the system information 
so this is very useful useful to kind of get you a sense of what you have right now it's um intel i9 uh 10 900k um no overclock um i'm showing also let's see here total physical memory um i can go into details you detailed um, SPD information. The SPD is what was entered by Patriot. Whenever they program the module, uh, they have a small space in, in the actual module where they 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 save things uh, related to what is um, in their memory chips. Um, here you can kind of, and, and maybe some of the settings that they have. Um, so here's some of the information. A lot of times they'll have like, it, um, uh, let's see here, serial information, serial number information here. Oddly, they didn't put any sort of serial in, uh, number information. Um, they will also put the XMP profiles uh, on as well. And this, this, this is where you kind of have that XMP information also stored and saved and then re uh, pulled from the motherboard uh, manufacturers. And then they will use that as part of the setting their their um, XMP um, to do the overclocking, uh, kind of the factory overclocking. Um, you can do benchmarking here. Normally, I like to do the benchmarking that's in Windows, so I kind of ignored that. Um, starting to test, just S is is the key you hit, and then uh, this is kind of what the test looks like. Um, I kind of let this just run to make sure that I have something stable. Right now, um, I, I put my Patriot memory uh, in, into this, and I am just doing a quick test right now, uh, baseline, just to make sure that without any sort of overclock settings, uh, things run very stable. Uh, they should be very stable without any sort of overclocking. They should pass without any problems. If you run the full test, it should pass without any problems. If you ever have any problems, the sense would be you should probably return the memory sticks and um, try to exchange them or, or get a refund and then get another set of memory sticks. So this is the, the test that I usually run when I first get a system to make sure everything is is is, is running perfect. Um, CPU has no problems, memory has no problems. Um, I think that's about it. I think that's kind of the major points here. Um, I'm going to do some overclocking with this, but the, the hack, right, it, the, I, I guess, is just to be able to make it so that way I can load Memtest 86 and store it um, on, on my, my SSD, create a small partition, and not have to use my thumb drive all the time. Um, so if you want, you could even take those files uh, that, that were generated and created when you made your USB drive. You can zip that up and store that away um, someplace and then make your life easier where later you can just uh, unzip that to a partition that you make and then have this readily available anytime you want to mem test uh, without having to load up your operating system. The test is finished. You can uh, save the HTML report. Hit yes. Why? Um, you can exit the test. Exit mem test. You can then boot into Windows. And the uh, cool thing is you can go into that um, that drive here is the test that was just run there is a report you can open up that report um, take a closer look at the details um, kind of store all this information uh, result summary of the tests and uh, certification that the, uh, the test has uh, occurred. Okay, hopefully that was useful. Uh, let me know if there's uh, any sort of uh, feedback you have for this. Other than that, 
um, something that I think everyone should know how to do. Uh, I think that's it. Peace out. Bye.